Hi guys, it's Alex from Team Vault. I'm joined by Nathaniel. Hello. And we're recording from murphysvault.com. Feel free to check us out. We've got singles, seal products, various other accessories. Uh, and if you're in Edinburgh, come down to the store. So today we're playing some modern. Uh, we've got some Grixis Death Shadow here. As we're recording this, Ixalan has not yet been released, but the way, due to the way Magic, on, Magic Online works, it is legal. So I mean, works is a strong word. The, the um, functions, yes. <laughs> the so, way that Magic Online anyway, functions. Yeah. Anyway, we have some ops in our deck, and we're playing a very low line count. So this is most similar to the version that Ari Lax played at um, GP Las Vegas. He had four sleight of hands, so 16 cantrips in total. Um, we're playing some ops, because I think for a death shadow it's generally a little bit better. Um, there are sometimes when you pass your mana up, so getting to be in that position where you can hold up Stubborn Denial, or a Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, and then opt and they don't do anything is, I think, reasonable enough over sleight of hand, even though the card is It's also reasonably worse. enough. It's reasonably enough better with Snap Custom Age as well. Yeah. Because it's the ability, nice. like, I far more often find myself wanting to, like, much more often than I think I want to cast a one mana cantrip with mana up, I more often want to, like, snap back a Serum Visions or a sleight of hand in the graveyard. Yeah. Because I like, basically just want to cycle a Snap Custom Age if they don't do anything. But I feel like I can't safely yeah. commit to that line by like tapping out of three mana uh, and spending I'm like you know taking away the option of snap fable pushing for example yeah there are some 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 matchups where that's very relevant uh, for sure I've seen some people talking about opt replacing serum versions for that reason I think you'll just see a lot more decks playing all eight alongside each other maybe a split like if you don't want eight cantrips maybe play like three and three or four and two but I don't yeah think I I think I agree with that. I think Serum Visions is a card I would much rather see in my opening hand and one I'm much happier to play turn one because it actually sets up future draws and smooths out the entire deck. Whereas Opt is more of a kind of, like, what card do I need right now? Obviously, in most cases, what card do I need right now is actually more powerful um, past about turn two. Uh, but I think Serum Visions is actually a very strong card still, despite the bad rap that it gets. Um, otherwise, the deck is, main deck at least is fairly standard, we've got, like I said, 17 lands, so I've shaved a Scalding Torrent and a Blood Crypt from like the regular mana base you might see. Because we are playing fewer lands, we're on a bit lighter on free, so just a one colorless command, just free Snapcaster Mages in the main deck, because this is essentially a free as well. Um, other than that we've got our eight, uh, sorry, four Delve Creatures, four Death Shadows, um, the additional Cantrips, alongside the Ops, we've got Serum Visions, Fort Scourge, Street Wraiths. Got some removal spells, we've got Dismembers, um, which I'm a big fan of. Um, you see a lot of people playing Terminate. I personally find that the games, there's a number of games that Dismember like wins you in a game, because it's like an insane pump spell for your Death Shadow. But... It's, the, it's the world's biggest searing blaze. It's where you get to go, oh, kill yeah. your Tarmogoyf and swing for nine. And they're like, oh, what? I thought, your t I thought your Death Shadow was a 5 5 and my Tarmogoyf was a life. And Terminate lets you kill the Tarmogoyf and swing for five and. You spent two mana yeah. rather than one. I have also been playing a lot of Dismember and I find it uh, very yeah. powerful. I'm going to hedge towards Dismember in this version, particularly because we're playing a little land camp. So I think the mana is a bit better, but if we find that the life loss too bad, if we move towards maybe one and one is correct numbers. Um, we got split between Fail Push and Lightning Bolts, just so we can handle some of the protection from black creatures. Like It's not great against Chameleon Colossus, but you can like Bolt Snap Bolt occasionally. Or I've definitely bolt, done that, and it's in a great block. line. Um, and Mirror Crusader and stuff. Uh, just one colleague's command, like I said, we're a bit lighter on threes. And then we got some regular, like, regular discard spells, six discard spells, two Stubborn Denials in the main deck. And then in the sideboard, we got some more counter magic. Just one Stubborn Denial more. Um, it's something I'm not particularly sure about, but I wanted to find space to for some of the other cards in the sideboard we'll talk about. So, Stubborn Denials, I know we're getting cut. We have uh, Ceremonious Rejection for Eldrazine Tron, basically. Uh, Detainment Stroke for Tron and uh, Escape Shift, um, Titan Shift decks. Uh, we've got Leyland Void, the song I'm testing is the Graveyard Hate here. Um, and because we're playing Leyland in the Void, I'm just playing Kozak's Return as a Sweeper. Um, the, th the idea being in any matchup where you strongly care about sweeping their creatures permanently, for example Dredge, you like to have Leyland in the Void in play already, so Kozak's Return like, just takes all their uh, Bloodgasts, whatever, away forever. 
than would. I've also found Cosmic Protect to be significantly stronger against things like Affinity. Yes, yeah, it's excellent against uh, Affinity. Got... Fairly strong against Merfolk as well. Um, we have some additional cards for grinding here. The you know, second Cogless Command, Stack Estimation, we have the last hope, former expecting games to go a bit longer. And then we have three young Pyromancers. This is a card I've not played with before. I know the final has a bit, um, but we're mainly playing it because we have the Ops. We have a little bit more spell heavy, cantrip heavy. So hopefully, when people are trying to hate out on our graveyard or our main game plan, we can bring in Pyromancer and just keep our life a little higher and make a bunch of tokens and sort of can play like a small, like a Grixis Delver control deck. like. Just give us like a different angle of attack. Um, these cards are something I'm sort of testing ahead of the RPTQ in November. Um, probably record some more videos with this and maybe some other decks ahead of them. Uh, I have that's all I have to say about the deck. You got anything in the final? Uh, not much. I quite like this direction of saving on threes and being lower to the ground with a lighter land count because my experience has been that. I lose a lot of the games that I flood out, but I lose much fewer, or far fewer of the games that I get screwed. Yeah. I'm able to recover a lot more easily in those games, because yeah. the, deck the deck just does so well, much of the land. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Neon Pyromancer is a card I'm really interested in exploring more. It, mainly, the thing I liked about it um, was that it felt like I just had a good sideboard plan for lots of matchups. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas before, lots of other options I've had for trying to play grindy games, I just didn't feel like my sideboard plan was like coherent. Yeah. Um, whereas Young Pyromancer really felt like it tied together a bunch of disparate uh, ideas and allowed me to play a bit differently post board when I wanted to, which was very helpful. Yeah. Actually, yeah, the main concerns I have about it going in is I don't think it plays well with Kozak's Return, and that's potentially fine. But there's some decks I think where you want to board in, you're worried they're going to hate out your main game plan and you want the sweeper and obviously then like young pyromancer and cosex turns a nombo yeah and i definitely agree there it also requires to play while well. you sort of have to have cards in your hand so i think in this version it's fine because we're not playing liliana the veil um so hopefully we can just like sandbag our inquisitions or cantrips later or maybe not cantrips because we want to cast them to find something but we can sign by like a dead inquisition or whatever play a pyromancer and try and get a token off it straight away yeah, it does definitely. So some of the games I played with it did require me to make slightly different sequencing lines. Mm -hmm. um, but I found it to be very strong as a, uh, an additional threat to bring in against control decks and combo decks. Um, when I wanted to be cutting removal spells, for example, uh, and I felt like I wanted to bring in more ways to just, like pressure them and make them have to react to me. Um, and your Pyromancer let me do that, where often I find the Lilianas either of them is less effective at that sort of thing in this sort of combo and um, control matchups. Uh, Veil is obviously great in those scenarios, but I think generally is slightly worse yeah. with the rest of the deck. Um, yeah. The other the other thing I was considering was um, based on uh, Paolo uh, wrote an article where he's advocated not playing Stubborn Denial, which and playing more discard spells and Liliana's in the main deck, which is an interesting direction. I think that's actually, that strategy is helped as well by the new Ixalan rules, which means you can have Liliana the last open your sideboard and you can have the wombo combo of Liliana the Veil to deal with big creatures, Liliana the last open to deal with small creatures and really sort of take over the game between the two of them. Uh, so that's something we might try in a future video. Uh, I think that's it for now, we'll see you in round one.